everyone in today's video i'm going to show you how to calculate age from date column and also calculate years difference between two dates okay and at the end of this video i have some very cool bonus tips to show you in power query so please watch to the end so right now my power bi desktop has been open i don't need to even import the data before getting to power query how to open power query directly from your power bi desktop you just click on your transform tab once you click on the transform data, you just wait for a few seconds and your Power Query editor is going to open. So our Power Query editor has opened up. Right now, there is no data in this Power Query. That is why it's, it's showing blank. So what we will do is to click on new source and click on Excel workbook because we want to export data from Microsoft Excel. Then I'll just go to the location of my file and type the file name. So I have an employee's data right here and I'm going to click to open. When I click to open, this navigator dialog box is going to show. Then I'm going to select the sheets which I want to export into Power Query. So I'm just going to click OK. So remember, we are directly in Power Query editor. That is why there is no load option and there is no transform option. So I'm going to click OK. So once I click OK, my data has been populated in this power query editor so i can quickly come here and double click this data so let's give it a name employees data let's just give it employees data so we know the data that we're working with and i am quickly going to duplicate this data so i'll click to duplicate this data and i'll select the first one i'll right click on the first one and disable the load then this is the employee's data so i actually like to duplicate data most times especially if you're working on a large data set if you have the original data always try to make sure that you have a copy of that data in case you run into errors or you run into problems that you cannot really undo you can easily go back to the original data and try to see how you can fix those particular things so i think it's actually best practice that you always make duplicates of that data before you start transforming, preparing, or just doing anything with the data. So right here we have employees data and this employees data has employees ID, date of birth, surname, basic things about employees in a company. So the first thing we're going to do is to calculate age from the date of birth. So we have date of birth here and we would like to know the age of these employees. Okay. So always make sure that you check that the formatting of your data type is actually correct. That dates are for date. Like for year date of date, this is formatted as date. So it is correct. If not, you might likely run into errors when you are using it to perform calculations. So first for the date of birth, I'm going to select it. So first I'm going to select the date of birth column. And since we want to create a column for age i'm going to select the add column tab so i'll quickly come over here and select the add column tab then right on this add column tab i'll come directly to from date and time group i'm going to click on this drop down and you see different drop down so from this particular date column you can extract the year you can extract months quarter and any other thing so right now we want to extract the age from this date of birth so i'm going to click on age from that date of birth and it automatically shows us age so right now this age is showing in duration this is a duration data type so when you see these figures like this don't fidget okay this is a duration data type we are going to format it right away so right now while my age column is still selected we are going to format it from duration to give us the number of years but before you do that another quick tip is that always go out from this add column tab just select preferably home tab because if you are still selected on add column any other transformation that you carry out will automatically create a new column in your data and you now have to come and take time to remove all of those columns which you don't you don't want to waste time on that so just select any other tab preferably the home tab so after, once i've selected the home tab here i've i'll come back to my age column my age column is still selected and then what I can do is just to come over to transform tab. So under this transform tab, we have the date and time column group. Then I'm going to select this duration and then scroll down to total years. So I'm going to select the total years 
and it's going to give us the total years but you see that it has returned the total years as a decimal number right on this transform tab you just come over to the number column group and then you select the drop down for rounding so we are going to round this down and once you run it down you, you see that it has returned the ages of all these employees within this data set so you can actually reorder this column to this point yeah so i'm just going to reorder it and allow it to stay closer to the date of birth. so once you see the date of birth, you can already see the age of each of these employees so that is the first thing the next thing i'm going to show you how to get years difference between two dates on this data set we have the hire date and we have the leave date the hire date is the date that employee employees were hired into this company or this the day they started working in this organization and the leave date is the date that they left the organization so if you notice we are supposed to have a date column here and it's supposed to be formatted as date but we have some null values so these null values actually represent the employees that are currently working in the organization there are some employees that have left the organization okay and there are some of them that are still active they are still currently working in the organization that is why we have this no values but we are going to do something to that particular date before we perform any calculation so in order for us to see some of the employees that have already left the organization i'm just going to select on this leave date column i'll click on home tab and i'll come to reduce rows group then i'm going to select keep rows so we are going to keep bottom rows the bottom rows will show us a dialog box that we can add the number of bottom rows we want to keep so here i just want to keep up to 50 50 bottom rows and I'm, i'll click ok so right now you can see that the top 50 bottom rows of this column you see that some of most of these employees have leave dates because they've left the organization so, so right now i'm just going to remove this particular step that i applied here and what we're going to do first is that i'm going to create a new leave date to replace these nulls because we cannot calculate we cannot calculate a date and a an empty value okay we will definitely run into error so we have to create a new leave date for a new leave date column for this particular data set in order to do that i'll just come over to add column and select custom column so we're going to use formulas to do this so under this custom column what we want to do is that we want to replace the null values to today's date okay we want to replace null values to today's date and we'll do that by typing the date time the date function so as you're typing you can see that the formulas are coming out these are part query aim language you also have to note that for each um software they have different functions where you can use to achieve certain things we're going to put a parenthesis i will now type a date time dot local so we're going to type this i'm just going to remove the first date time i started typing and then close this parenthesis and then close the parenthesis for date time so basically this date time dot local is what is going to return the current date today's date that is what is going to return but because we want to replace nulls if, so if i click ok this formula is going to populate that entire column with today's date and that is not what we want we only want to replace the nulls remember there are some employees have left the organization so we want their leave date to remain the way it is so what we're going to do is to wrap this up in an if function so i'll just come to this point to type my if function so i'll just come to this point and type if so we want to say that if our leave date so if our leave date is equal to null then it should show this else leave date so basically what this formula is saying is that if leave date is equal to null if it has an empty cell replace it with today's date else just leave it as the leave date and then i'm just going to click ok but before i click ok there's an there's a box for column name so we can just give it a new column name so we'll just give it a leave date 
remember we already have an original leave date column in this data set you can make your um the new column name to be slightly different from that one then i'll click ok so once i press ok you can see that we have a new leave date column right here so i'm just going to click on this icon that symbol and change it to date because this is a date column so we want it formatted as a date column then i'm going to reorder this column to where our leave date was so i'm just going to place it right here and after that because we have a new leave date column okay i'm just going to remove this formal leave date then this is what i'm going to do i'll right click and click to remove and the column will be removed because we have a new leave date column. So this is the new column that we will work with. If you want to calculate the total number of years that the employees have worked, the total number of years that they've worked in this company, we can now calculate it because we have a full date column that does not have empty values. It doesn't have null values. So I'm just going to select back on our add column tab and then select a custom column. So for this custom column, we're going to use a simple formula. The available columns here show us the number of the, all the columns that are available in our data set. So you can always select and add to your calculations. So right now we want to, we want to subtract the higher date from the leave date. So I'm going to select the leave date and click insert. So it's going to insert right into this formula and i'm going to use a minus sign and then select higher date and then click on insert so we are subtracting the higher date from the leave date so we'll be able to get the number of years that each employees have worked for this organization then i'm just going to change this i'm going to change the name and i call it number of working years or you can just give it any other name that you want to give then i'll click ok once I click OK, we have number of working years. Remember what happened when we were trying to extract the age column? The same thing has happened right now because it is showing us as duration. So what we can do, remember also to select another tab because we don't want to add a new column. We want to work with only this column as of now. So I'm just going to select on my own tab. OK, I'll select on the transform tab rather. I'll come over to date and time column, then select duration. And then I'll select back the total years. So this is the total years. I'll come back to number column group and then select rounding and we would round down. So this is the number of working years. This is the number of years that each employees have worked for this organization. We can also set um, the status for each of these employees. We'll set active and inactive status. Inactive means that they've left the organization and active means that they are currently working in this organization in order to do that we'll just i'll just come back and click on add column tab then i'll select custom column because we're using a custom column so what this will do we're going to type if if our leave date so i'll say if our leave date i'll just type the formula if leave date is equal to today's date so i'm just going to use this formula so that anytime you're refreshing this particular data set the data would refresh to the current date of the day you are using this data except maybe a new employee has left the organization you can always replace the leave date for that particular employee so i'm going to use date time dot date and i'm going to use date time local now so this is going to return today's date so we'll say if leave date is equal to today's date then active so i'm going to use a um, double quote and enclose it then we'll type else inactive So this is what our formula looks like. It's basically saying if the leave date is equal to today's date, then that means the employee is still active. The employee is still currently working in that organization. Else, just show inactive. Then I can, okay, before then, I can just quickly change the column name. So we can change it to status. And that is that. Then click OK. 
So once we click OK, you see that we have a new column. So I'm going to set the data type as a text because it's a text. It's not both text and number. So if you click here for this filter, you can see that we have both active and inactive employees the inactive meaning that they've left the organizations so from this video you've seen that we've been able to calculate age from the date of birth we've also been able to calculate years difference to show number of working years for each employees and also set their status remember the bonus tip i mentioned one of them is that as you're cleaning your data the applied steps is showing the different transformation steps and you see that they come with their automated names so sometimes you might want to give it meaningful names that you can easily understand so what you can do so for this part where we say calculated inserted age so you can just right click on it and click to rename okay so let's say i want to say inserted age from from dates of birth I'll press enter so you see that i have changed the name of that transformation step so it just shows you that if, if you are coming back to work on this data set it is easy for you to understand that okay this age was inserted from date of birth and not from higher date or leave dates as i mean the case may be so that is one of it and another one i want to show you is how to change your data source settings okay so if you want to change your data source settings you can always come to where you have source and click on these settings once you click on the settings this dialog box is going to show it's showing excel workbook remember our data is from excel workbook so if you connected to any data source that like sql or you wrote a python script it is going to show and you'll be able to change whatever thing you want to change within your data source if the part has changed the part of this file has changed let's say this employee's data has moved from this documents folder to another folder you will need to update this part if not your power query editor might show you some errors thank you so much guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it